Snowpocalypse 2014. A whole two or three inches falls on the Oregon countryside, leaving people kind of stranded. Yeah, I know, if you're in other parts of the country, you're gonna make fun of this. But natural disasters have had a huge impact on history. And today, we're gonna take a look at a couple of those. Hey there, history lovers. I'm Jeremy Corwin, and today we're looking at natural disasters. In the last 10 years, we've seen our fair share of disasters, including the tsunami in Thailand, Hurricane Katrina, the earthquake in Japan, and Superstorm Sandy. And you can find so much information on these with a simple Google search that we're not going to talk about those today. So here was my criteria for the disasters I did pick. Two disasters that occurred during the time period my students study one disaster that killed the most people, one type of disaster that was just too darn interesting not to talk about, and one disaster that was local. Yeah, I know. When you throw something out on the internet, really the whole world could be considered local. But we're talking local for me, which is Portland, Oregon. Let's start with our first disaster, and it's one we've already talked about in a previous video. This is the Thera eruption. A volcano on the island of Thera, which is today called Santorini, devastated the island. It wiped out the Minoan settlement of Akrotiri, and it may have caused the eventual downfall of all of Minoan civilization. There were three major phases of this eruption. First, there were warning signs, including earthquakes and ash. People saw this and fled the island. This is why we don't find any bodies in the site of Akrotiri. Two, the volcano explodes, sending ash and rock out into the air. This debris lands on Crete, it damages crops, and it changes the weather, and it makes it difficult for Minoans to farm. The island starts to break apart at this point. And three, the volcano collapses in on itself into the sea, which causes these huge tsunamis, these huge powerful waves, to crash into Crete at 200 miles an hour. Here you can see a satellite image of Thera, and see that big gap in the middle? That's where the volcano was. Historians guess that the Theron eruption is what really weakened Minoan civilization so that the Mycenaeans were free to take over. Our next disaster is another volcano, but this time it's a little bit west over in Italy. This disaster happened near the Roman city of Pompeii in 79 AD. The eruption of Mount Vesuvius covered the city in 20 feet of ash and it killed 16,000 people. Because it was buried and locked away from moisture, the city has been very well preserved. And archaeologists have even recovered bodies that are in the same positions they were when they died. Because of this, it is an extremely important site for historians because we can now see a little bit about what daily life in Rome was really like. It's also a very popular tourist attraction. By the way, three million people still live around Mount Vesuvius today, and it's an active volcano, and this means it's probably one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world. Let's fast forward almost 2,000 years and look at a disaster that happened in 1931 in central China. Unusual weather conditions, including a lot of snow in the mountains, unusually heavy rains in the spring and summer and extreme cyclone activities we're talking seven cyclones that year caused a rise in the rivers the yellow river the hui river and the yangtze river were all affected in this flood the damage from these floods affected 28.5 million people and it killed anywhere from 145,000 to 4 million people the capital of china in 1931 was nanjing which was on an island in the yangtze river in the capital, the river rose 53 feet higher than normal. That's almost 10 of me. And a million people died of drowning and waterborne diseases like cholera and typhus. Government officials describing the event talked about families selling off wives and daughters that they couldn't feed, killing babies, and in some instances, even cannibalism. This was an awful event. The floods in China in 1931 are on the top of most lists for the worst disasters ever. Ever. Today, the Three Gorges Dam helps prevent these rivers from flooding. Next, we move to a type of disaster I discovered while researching this video, which is just too darn interesting not to talk about. Exploding lakes. That's right, lakes that explode. Here's how it works. So here you have a lake, and here you have a source of carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide leaks into the lake and gets diffused into the water. This is the same way we carbonate soda. 
And because this happens better at lower temperatures, the carbon dioxide builds up at the bottom of the lake. Once something triggers the gas at the bottom of the lake to rise, a landslide, maybe an earthquake, extreme rain or wind, the gas rises from the bottom of the lake and explodes out the top. Sort of like when you shake up a soda can and open it up and it explodes, same idea. This, this can also cause huge waves out of the lake to spread out. But here's where the real danger is. Because carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen, it stays near the ground. And as you know, humans and animals, we can't breathe carbon dioxide. So anyone near the lake suffocates. There have only been two recorded incidences of this type of eruption. They're called limnic eruptions. They're both in the African country of Cameroon. One of these happened in 1984 at Lake, and I know I'm pronouncing this wrong, Lake Manan. Uh, and it killed 38 people. A worse incident happened in the same country in 1986. And again, I know I'm saying this lake name wrong. Lake Neos or Nios. The incident at this lake killed 1,700 people and 3,500 livestock. Let's go more local, to me that is. In Oregon, there was once a city called Van Port, and it neighbored Portland. It was located where Delta Park and the Portland International Raceway is today. Van Port was built during World War II to house the large number of people that moved to Portland to work in the shipyards, building ships for World War II. So many people moved to Portland that there weren't enough places for people to sleep. So you can sometimes find pictures of people sleeping on pool tables and bars. So eventually housing projects like Vanport uh, were built to house all these new residents. At its height, Vanport had a population of 40,000 people, about 40% of which were African American. And this was a big deal. In 1940, there were only 1,800 African Americans in all of Oregon. By 1946, 15,000 African Americans lived in just Portland many of which lived in Vanport. This meant that Portland was largely segregated with whites living in one part of town and African Americans living in another part of town. This is gonna be important for this natural disaster we're talking about. After the war, Vanport lost about half its population. Veterans moved into Vanport, but it still remained a largely African American population living in Vanport. Vanport hired the first black teachers and police officers in the whole state of Oregon. It was the second largest city and it housed the only state college in the Portland area, Vanport College. On May 30th, 1948, a dike holding back the Columbia River broke during a flood. Because a lot of people were away from home for Memorial Day and there was some advance notice, only 15 people died as a result of the flood on Vanport, but the city was destroyed, leaving a lot of people homeless. The people from Vanport, including the African-American population, moved into North and Northeast Portland. This event has been credited with helping to ease the integration of Portland and make it a more diverse city. Vanport College relocated and reopened downtown and would eventually be renamed Portland State University, my alma mater. Go Vikes! So as you can see, nature can have a huge impact on people. Whether disasters kill a lot of people or change the demographics of a city, the impact nature can have on history is huge. And it kind of puts our snowpocalypse in perspective, huh? Hey everyone. So I'm putting together a list of ideas for shorter videos that give you some key social studies concepts, things like what is a colony, uh, in kind of that same length, you know, the two to three minute mark. Some of the ideas I've got, like in this video, I talk about demographics, but then I don't talk about what demographics mean. So demographics would be an idea. Uh, what is a city state might be another idea. What is a monarchy, an oligarchy, and a democracy? So something I could cover in two to three minutes that would help you out in social studies, that would be shorter than these longer videos I've put together. If you have any ideas, please shoot them down in the comments. And as always, if you like what you see, like and subscribe.